I think I know what the Void Elf Racial might be used for. Yep, blinking through this. Yes, 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 yes. Can you skip Can you skip the rest of the gauntlet by doing that? No way. They're just skipping the gauntlet. So good. <laughs> that is okay, so this is so much time. That's a ridiculous that's time save. Crazy. Okay, so here's the thing. We knew about this this tech for mages. Mages can blink through that barrier because it's not an actual barrier. It's just a, it's just a wall. So similar to like the stairs in Ataldazar, mages can blink through the stairs before they actually spawn. It looks like Void Elf Racial uses the exact same function, so you can just blink through and not be in combat with the pack and just completely skip the gauntlet. Now, of course, they're gonna have to find out other trash percentage to pull along the way, but wow, that's that's that's, that's inefficient trash anyways. Look, they have to deal with Blastatron, which is a single target enemy. You never want to pull single target enemies in the MDI. That was a scary moment there. But back to that hasty buff. It's a spell stealable debuff that mages can do more damage with, which makes them which makes them competitive on the trash without popping combust. And we can see this is going to be neck and neck. The trash pack going down for complexity limit here. Just well, Deplete from Beyond is dealing with this trash pack. Unfortunately, they're going to have to res Eric, so they're going to be pulling the boss probably slightly later than Deplete from Beyond. Yeah, and this was the one death difference, right? Deplete from Beyond had one death from Inchari going down earlier, so Complexity Limit had a five seconds advantage. But now they lost this five seconds advantage, now they're completely even. But oh, Complexity the Limit, they have time. the mage, right? They're pulling at the exact same time. Deplete from Beyond does not have Blunders available yet, though. They still have a 10 seconds cooldown, so they either use it late or they use it in phase two. And we know just how much damage a mage can do on this pull here with Bloodlust. So now we see I'm fired up, just popping his combustion and just nuking those awakened moths. And you might think, oh, the combustion is available, is done. He's not doing that much damage. Aha, yes. But the ignite will continue to tick for several seconds after the combustion. That's why you see his DPS still going up. You can see the awakened mobs are getting shredded. And uh, yeah, I mean, you can see the difference in damage. All of their awakened mobs are below 30% now, whereas it looks like they're kind of just focusing down Samurai on the side of Deplete from Beyond. And they get that damage buff on Aerial Unit as well with the combustion being applied to him. So they're gonna have a little bit more boss damage because of that as well. That would be interesting though, because it's going to come down to a single target battle at the end. This is going to be incredibly close. Yeah, this is going to be super close. You can see the percentage of the aerial unit. It's completely even. The play from beyond did now manage to go ahead to get ahead a little bit, but they still have the two awaken mobs to deal with. While complexity limit, because of the combustion, they're actually done with the awaken mobs faster. And there's no way they can focus down the aerial unit before they finish off the awaken mobs, because otherwise you're just going to die. Because once the aerial unit dies, we're gonna get stunned until King Mechagon spawns, oh, right? No, so, atrocity. Oh no, they do have a Valorous available, but this is another five seconds. And in such a close game, this will matter a lot. It will matter a lot here as well. And you can see that complexity limit still does have a slight lead in terms of boss damage, but that five seconds on the board is pretty much gonna close the gap. I would say that these teams are essentially dead on in terms of how what their progression is right now. And you know what? We can actually time that based off of when this boss dies. Let's keep an eye on this. Aerial unit going down for complexity limit at, let's count it, 15.05 on their timer. Let's see when it goes down for deplete from beyond, 15.09. So actually a one second advantage for deplete from beyond with that death timer. It's gonna come down to who can do more single target damage. Okay, this is all gonna come down to the amount of DPS those teams can do on this boss. And we're gonna see the difference in comp now. I mean, the mage is gonna do a lot more damage when he's got the combust up, but the hunters are doing more consistent damage. And now the combust is coming up out of, uh, fired up here, but it's gonna be a smaller combust. I'm pretty sure he did use the bigger one uh, at the start of phase one. So definitely a little bit of a, a smaller burst coming out of the mage here, but you can see how, how low the Omega Buster is dropping here. It is a tyrannical environment. So this different in DPS matters quite a bit. But the mage's damage is also going to fall off. So after the initial burst, the fleet from beyond is probably going to catch up. I mean, I think it's all going to come down to whether or not the boss lives long enough to give him a second combust. If he gets that second combust off in this phase, I could see complexity limit using that burst to pull ahead here. But it's going to be close. This boss is going to last about a, a minute and 20-ish seconds, I believe, on this difficulty on Tyrannical. So yeah. you just might get some of that combust in, but it's, ah, it's this is going to be super close. Complexity limit is 8% ahead on the boss with a 5-second death timer. This is, uh, this is ridiculously close. 
can, you can see there a little bit ahead on the percentage here, but the five seconds with the death, and you see the creep from Yant is slowly catching up on the percentage. The combustion's available, the he's using it. Consistent damage, there we go. We have the big combust coming out of fired up now. So the boss is gonna die incredibly quickly here. You see the creep from Yant has no way of competing with that burst coming out of the fire mage here. Unfortunately, fired up had to block though because of uh, the positioning of the shock bots. So did lose probably a little bit of damage having to use that ice block. But Omega Buster is about to go down. Then King Mechagon spawns. And if the Fleet from Beyond is not going to kill it within five seconds extra, then it's going to be complex to limit. And moving on. And I don't think they're going to make it five seconds. It's going to come down to the five seconds here. King Mechagon has plopped down for Deplete from Beyond. Count the timer here. Three, they made two. It. I think Deplete oh. from Beyond has somehow done it. Whoa, the wow, play from so beyond close. two seconds. It's been two seconds and that's it. And they take the map and stay alive. What a workshop there, Tuttles. Oh, man. That, uh, oh, that is dude, all right, actually. Bud? Yeah, dude, that, that was, there was a lot to unpack in that dungeon, I'll be honest. Uh, I do not, oh, man, that pathing from complexity limit, I'm... I still don't know what was better in between like the five pack at the top of the landing yeah. versus the waste in the waste processing unit. That was like, insane. You, I, I, mean, think a, the, I think I think there's it's a better, but I think they executed cool. their third boss worse compared to the plea from beyond, and that's why they made up the time. I think so. I'm not really sure. It's hard yeah. to tell. It just like adjusting the rounds. We always talk, kind of talked as well as Iro about like, oh yeah, it's just like an on the rails dungeon. This is just what everybody does for the route. And that just went completely out of the window in this one. Oh yeah, I mean, I, we were all racking our brains right there trying to figure out what that Voidal thing was. And it turns out it's actually incredibly cool. It all came down to those random deaths. That one death at the end of the trash pack is what lost them that dungeon, unfortunately. So I, I'm sure there was other, there are other tiny little diff, uh, improvements that both teams could have made here, but that was a fantastic match to watch. Uh, or sorry, Deplete from Beyond is going to have to pull some trash. Yeah, Perplex does not. So you're right, yeah, because Perplex is trying to deal with those obelisks, yeah, they're going to have to delay this bloodlust. That is good news, though. That means they are reaching this boss at the 10-minute marker here. I think that is the, the fastest that a team has made it to this last boss. I think Perplex may be on the fastest mother load time that we've seen so far. Yeah, they might very well be. As they are in the last boss area now, they are using their... Um, Fame death to the Iro that's that trash that they just pulled, and now they're ready to engage. They still have 20 seconds on the bloodlust. Maybe they decide to Are they wait. waiting I'm for bloodlust? Sure. Oh, no, they're not. No, they're, 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 just, not. they're going they're right in here. They'll lust the when it becomes there available. Yeah, here come those awakened enemies, and these awakened enemies are kind of dangerous on this fight in particular, but the triple hunter composition is really good at dealing with all these things. They have to turtle for the fear. They have the ability to move from blood pools no matter where they are. They can dodge the Dark Fury pretty easily. And they can even uh, taunt the Spirit Breaker from Urgroth. So they have r really good answers to almost all of the Awakened abilities in this fight. It's still difficult, though. Yeah, definitely still difficult. We see a Shine actually using that spot there on the stairs where the missiles actually don't reach from the boss. So that's a position you can use. But the Gatling Gun still hits you even if you do stand on the stairs. So that's why he went back inside, making sure he does dodge that Gatling gun. And it also really matters where they position themselves, because the blood of the Corruptor not only spawns a pool below himself, but he also spawns two pools below players. That's why they want to make sure they're not in the wrong position to not spawn those pools in a bad spot. And now, unfortunately, the Gatling gun is being casted in a really bad position. There's no way for them to dodge it. So they just had to run through that Gatling gun, and Smog needed to outheal it. They are almost done with their wake him up so only the blood the blood left and once the blood is left they should be able to finish off this boss easily so incredibly done here by perplex on that awaken pool meanwhile to from beyond they are doing their kiting strategy here everybody who is still in the boss platform is just in so much danger because they, they don't have a healer here with them mogul razdunk slightly lower than it is for perplex but now perplex just has the mogul as well and they have an extra player to do damage here so uh, the bloodlust also not yet been used by Deplete from Beyond. That is, yeah. that is so they're, they're going to have to, the bloodlust probably after the intermission or maybe during the intermission to get out of that phase as quickly as possible. Perplex already used that bloodlust, and that is a, a difference between these two strategies. Uh, Perplex just fired it off once it became available. Wow, look how low everybody's health is on Deplete from Beyond, but a huge burst wow. of healing coming out 
from all of those Mechagon bit band combos and uh, the acceleration of clicks there. So both of the bosses, basically for both teams, just jumped into the air, starting that intermission at the very same second. They were so close to each other, and you see the zero deaths for both teams as well. Now, the difference in DPS is going to matter so much, in, not only in this intermission phase, but also in the second phase. Now, the Cleave from Beyond having the Bloodlust definitely means they're going to be able to nuke right, the Right, it's Bloodlust faster, versus the healer. Versus That's... the healer DPS, yeah, exactly. That is going to be and the difference here. they have to here. use less defensives as well, because um, the, the Hunters and the Cleave from Beyond, they have to make sure they stay alive, because yeah, how, how uh, they don't have a healer to heal them. How's Dr. J going to live this? I, I don't know if he can. He doesn't have Turtle. He's in an Eye of Corruption. No. Okay, he, oh. he somehow is able to live there. I think that... That may have been a natural dodge for Dr. J to live that, that drill smash. I'm <laughs> not 100% sure. You think that's what sure, happened? But I believe that that is what has just happened for Deplete From Beyond. Wow, if they win as a result of that, that will be wild. But here it is. The Here's is the so Bloodlust. Low. There it is. 26% on Mogul Razzling for Deplete From Beyond. They have the Bloodlust. 18% though for Perplex. Look at these two bosses. They are melting so and this is going to be neck and neck between these two teams. 2% now separating these two boss health totals. There oh are no God. deaths for either team. 10%. The bosses are on the same percentage. It will all come down. This now it is, is so the Cleave from Beyond who's ahead. The Cleave from Beyond to killing this boss slightly faster with is that Bloodlust. Oh, they're going to be able to kill oh, the Cleave from Beyond. Oh, not on Beyond who made it. Misty wow. Igloo came oh. back. <laughs> he ran up the ramp, came back. Popped way of the crane, added some extra damage, and another two second victory! Oh my goodness! The oh. play from Beyond's go to the lower finals! What? Wow. Dr. J really dodged that smash? Is the natural dodge? So. Dude. I think that was the natural dodge! Had to be. So, so Hunter. Had to be. He Hunter didn't have turtle! Has, okay, so Hunter right. has. Uh, is an agility class, and since they play Dance of Death, they have an insane amount of flat agility, which gives them increased natural dodge chance. He had his Dance of Death up and naturally natural dodged the drill smash. What a game! You can't, you can't intervene it, or can you intervene? Oh my! God. Oh, it may have been intervened. Yeah, it may have been intervened. Yeah, yeah. you can intervene. say that would be more. You can, can safeguard it. You can't intervene that'd be, it, right? That'd be more believable. I'm not sure. Uh, Dratlos is looking. I'm, yeah, I'm I, just I, investigating. I don't see a winning safeguard. Yeah, so, so if he did it, it was not through safeguard. It was through a regular intervene. I'm not, I'm not sure if that works on it. But either way, wow, that was close. And that was an incredible <laughs> performance. Both teams here with 14-minute-ish wow. mother loads. That is so much faster than uh, the time that Golden Guardians put up in this dungeon as well. Golden Guardians had a 15-minute run, and we thought that was awesome. But, man, that was fast. Yeah. <laughs> and especially with Igloo coming in, he's yeah. decked out and damaging corruptions, probably popped his obsidian claw on the boss the very last second, way the crane's up, just does a little bit of extra damage for a two second difference to get the job done. That That is that is some great routing by the healer Nagura, that's what we just love to see. That was... That's not great. The, the turtle was a really useful cooldown to have in phase one of this last uh, this boss fight here. So I guess they'll have it for phase two coming back probably. But you can see pets getting dismissed here and resummoned, summoning out these turtles. The turtles are going to be the pet of choice for two of the three hunters here because they are tenacity pets for a 20% DR from their pet family and they have a 50% DR personally. And the combination of those two on this plus 21 key level is enough to survive a Spirit Breaker cast from Urgroth Breaker of Heroes, which they can use to soak instead of the tank so, they can get. Exactly, historically, and you can see it from Wunderbar, uh, they're using Core Hounds, which historically have been the hunter pet of choice for most of the MDI. But once we jumped from a 19 to a 21 level, uh, being able to take a melee from uh, Urgroth Breaker of Heroes actually is fairly important. And if you end up uh, like eating the melee, you need the both of those walls active. You need the 50% wall from the turtle, and you need the 20% DR from the tenacity pet. Just yeah, you can see actually pets getting revived here by mirrors on the side of Wunderbar, whereas Golden Guardians have not, they've saved themselves to revive pet cast. So that is an efficiency advantage actually for, for Golden Guardians with this different pet selection. Wunderbar but the downside is, is look oh. at this dude. Wunderbar is actually burning aerial unit uh, R21X a little bit faster than Golden Guardians. Golden Guardians have their bloodlust available though. Yes, Golden Guardians did not lust pull because they, their lust wasn't available on pull. They'll be lusting the next phase of this fight. Wunderbar have already used that lust and they've used it to catch up, but 
they don't have access to that resource now for the, the end of the fight. So I'd say Golden Guardians still have an advantage here, but it is a small one. It is not one that I would feel good about up against the huge sustained damage that we've seen Gundabar be able to put out so far. Five second death differential as well uh, is what separates these teams. Yoda going down on Head Machine as Heart Flux. So basically Golden Guardians have to kill King Mechagon five seconds ahead of where Wunderbar end up killing King Mechagon, which if you have Bloodlust Bell Blight, oh my goodness, King Mechagon jumping out of that first aerial unit at man. the exact same time for both teams. This is neck and neck. It is five seconds in favor of Wunderbar, whereas there is that Bloodlust in favor of Golden Guardians. I think I'd prefer to be on the Bloodlust side of things, but it is, it is really, really, really close. I, I would hate to be on either side of this, honestly. Yeah, I think I, I think I take the bloodlust over the five seconds from death differential too. But good goodness, please Lust press is still being sir. held here by the golden guardians. Why? There it is. Wonder... Okay, here, here comes the bloodlust. Okay, there, there it is. The, the temp... lust comes out eventually. Oh, this man, is going to be a defensive lust as well, get, getting it to overlap with this magneto arm. There's some value there in uh, in affecting your healing. There absolutely is some value there. Again, they need to kill King Mechagon himself uh, once it comes out of the Omega Buster by five seconds. Because Look of that at this! Runebar is actually opening this gap in their favor, despite Golden Guardians having a Bloodlust. I guess it's closing a little bit back up now, but again, Wunderbar gets a five second bonus here. So Golden Guardians, not only do they have to kill Omega Buster first, they have to do it by five seconds. And this is even on the health total between these two bosses. Now slightly in favor of Golden Guardians. Golden Guardians, 1% ahead. Go to the end of this That is path. not enough though, Tettles. That, that's not enough. They need a, they need yeah, a few yeah, more yeah, than 1%. Yeah, just five seconds. They're, they're hoping for somebody on the side of Wunderbar to die. Yeah, that would be good. That would be, that would be what Golden Guardians needs for this. Both both sides here just trying to do everything they can to eke out a little bit more damage. Four percent now. Oh, Golden Guardians is going to kill the Omega Buster first. Okay, and there it is. So Omega Buster. This will, once King Mechagon dies, this is going to start a five second timer. Golden Guardians have to do everything they can to just kill this king. I don't think it's going to be enough though. Yeah, there it is. The, the timer starts. Oh, Three, oh, oh two, no. whoa! This is two seconds again. Is this the second time in Workshop we've had just two second differences in performance right there? Wunderbar is actually insane. They didn't even have lust as they started the uh, the Omega Buster at the very end, and they still took the win, Zyro. What? Wow. I mean, <laughs> that's impressive. And I, I don't really know what to say, man. These teams are just so close in skill level that... I kind of hope we see them again in our grand finals because I'd love to see yeah. a best of five series with all if these teams are going to be playing like this today. I uh, what is this factor that's allowing Wunderbar to be able to come back and just pump a little more damage here, Dranos? What is it? I don't know, Jack. If I knew, I would be I'd be winning MDIs. That's There's, true. It's that's a true. secret. There are five people in the world who understand how Wunderbar does it, and they all play for Wunderbar. It must be. I mean, I think. It, when we were looking at like King's Rest, for example, I was like, okay, maybe there's a couple people who are getting hit by tornadoes, causing JB to be forced to stop damage, start healing them a little bit more, but I wasn't really seeing much extra damage being taken taken on King Mechagon on that one, Tettles. Maybe they could be using Excel a little bit more, but like they're just across the board, it was just Zalia doing a little bit more damage. Everybody on Funabar just doing a little bit more damage. Dude, I, I am I'm at a loss. Like I don't I don't know where they gain the extra damage from. Because again, the the bigger mistake was made by Wunderbar, right? Like if you just yeah. added up the, the time lost from from individual events, like Yoda dying wasn't great, but that probably cost 10 or 15. The No Mercy charging in the wrong direction, that was way more costly. That was a 25 second penalty. Yeah, that, yeah. that was like 25 yeah. to 30 seconds. Of course, and somehow Wunderbar the just, they just come back. I mean, does, does this insane. matter? I don't personally know because I'm not like too into healers. So Jackie, you might know more about this than I do. But Zaley was running expedient with gushing wounds, and JB's running versatility with gushing wounds. Is the difference really that big of a difference in terms of single target damage? It can be pretty big because the higher haste that you have, the more that you're going to be able to proc gushing wounds. Although gushing wounds is damage does proc with versatility or does scale with versatility as well. So I don't think uh, JB was running any of the gushing wounds. I think part of it could be that. Uh, I believe they're all running the three sunrise techniques, one, one, or sorry, three secret infusions, one sunrise technique on top of it. I think more sunrise techniques would also merit a lot more damage. Okay, JB is running three sunrise techniques. So I think part of it might also just be that 
if he's being stressed to the point where he's not able to fit in enough globals, especially because he's not really running with a lot of haste, uh, he's just not meriting a lot of extra sunrise tech damage. And yeah. if he's not running any gushing wounds, that's another problem as well. So there's a couple little areas that here and there where if he has to expend extra time to start healing other people, it's going to further compound the l loss of damage.